This is my book talk for the novel Be More Chill by Ned Vizzini. Be More Chill is a young adult novel. The genre is a mixture of both realistic fiction and science fiction. This novel, although short, is both funny and intriguing. It touches upon subjects that many teens nowadays can relate to, such as romantic relationships, drugs, and social life, just as a few examples. An interesting quote from the book is, It's not like with people. With people you can argue and have tests and music reviews and wars to decide who's better. But with software, it's pretty clear. I get involved beyond my version number and then I'm useless. I like this quote because it opposes the saying that people never change. It demonstrates that people have the ability to change and make themselves better, unlike software where it is what it is and there are set limits. The very ability to change and improve is what makes us human, and we shouldn't take that for granted. The setting in Be More Chill is an average public high school in a fictional town called Middlesbrough, New Jersey. This school has a drama club that does annual plays, which the main character partakes in. Many important events in the plot take place in this theater. The main character of the story is a junior named Jeremy Heer, who is deemed the loser of the school and is the constant target of torment for the cool kids. He is extremely introverted and socially awkward, especially when it comes to talking to girls. One girl specifically, Christine Coniglia, who he is helplessly in love with. His one goal for high school isn't to become popular or to ace his classes, it's only to survive. Jeremy's closest friend is a boy named Michael Mel. Michael is very laid back and self-aware of his social standings. He is very supportive of Jeremy and his endeavors. He, like Jeremy, also can't wait for high school to be over and would much rather spend his time playing video games than get involved in school drama. Another character is the Squip. While the Squip isn't technically a person, it has a consciousness in Jeremy's brain and is present prominently through the story as a voice in his head. The Squip is an AI computer which his sole purpose is to assist a person to live their best life when that isn't always the outcome. Jeremy is in school and he's feeling generally anxious about everything. He hears Jenna Rowland talking about him behind his back. He's being jealous of Jake Dillinger and he's thinking about his crush, Christine. At lunch, Jeremy finds his friend. Did you tell Christine yet? I wrote her a letter. Well, that's progress, but I threw it away. Later in the book, Jeremy finds himself attending a Halloween dance. At the dance, a popular guy who usually never talks to Jeremy named Rich comes up to him. After demonstrating his ability to get girls, he tells Jeremy what helps him be cool. It's called a squip, a super quantum unit intel processor. The pill is guaranteed to help the user get whatever they want, whether it be a promotion or to become popular in high school. After some searching, Jeremy finds a dealer, pays for the squip, then takes the pill. It begins working on Jeremy's new persona by making him buy new clothes and act in bold ways. The conflict of the rest of the story revolves around Jeremy's resistance to the script's instructions, due to them not always working on his love interest, Christine. One theme of the story is how the high school social hierarchy negatively affects the lives of teens. This is demonstrated again and again throughout the novel. The main example being Jeremy and his experiences with the squip. After reading the novel, it is clear the squip is symbolic of drug abuse. Jeremy takes the squip in order to become cool among his peers, then becomes dependent on it every day. As he continues to engage with the squip, his family and friends are pushed out of the picture. And after that, it only continues to go downhill. The, f the character Jeremy in this story is an example of how the thirst for popularity young people feel as teens poorly affects their lives. I'd recommend this book for ages 13 to around 17 due to language and scenes that may be inappropriate for younger readers. Judging by the tone of the story, it seems to be geared towards teens in the way that it portrays authority figures, so I wouldn't recommend this to older adults. This book isn't a difficult read. It is quite short, but it provides an interesting scenario to read about. The story appeals to a certain type of person that isn't easily offended and can handle a lot of teen angst. At certain parts, it was very good, and in others, such as the ending, it was lacking. So, overall, I personally thought the book was good, and I would recommend it to most.